welcome to the Courageous Self-Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we get into self-care that is beyond what I think most people would consider to be self-care. And what I've found with working specifically with self-care with clients and with myself and with different ideas over the last few years is that what we really want to do with self-care is find a blend between external and internal self-care. So external self-care is what we usually think of as self-care. Exercise, nutrition, getting massages, going to the spa, doing your nails, that kind of thing. And that is all fantastic. It's super important. And at the same time, if we're just focusing on that, it's like paddling a boat that goes around and around and around in one circle because we're only dipping in one side of our or. So what's also important is internal self-care. And that means doing stuff that's on the inside. It is uncomfortable. It is murky. It's unknown. Often there's a lot of emotion that we don't know what to do with that comes up when we're exploring exploring on the inside. And so that's where courageous self-care comes in. We do want to move through that fear and discover who we are. And we also generally need a guide. We need to gather in community. And that's another thing about, um, that's another thing about self-care that is a fallacy or a myth is that the best self-care is not done by yourself. You're not meant to be this strong, independent, um, untouchable woman. Yes, we want strength and yes, we want to be able to take care of ourselves, but we also benefit from asking for help, going outside of ourselves, seeking things from others who have already been there. It's so important to have a guide. And that's why I have created a festival that's coming up later this fall. It is the Courageous Self-Care Festival, and it's an opportunity for women who are feeling overworked, underappreciated, overwhelmed, to gather in community, seek some answers, see what's going well, see what can be shifted, and get some answers along with having a lot of fun and making face-to-face connections. I feel like that is so important. So today I have with me another guide. It is Michelle Carr. Michelle is going to be joining us at the festival. And Michelle, I'm so glad to have you here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> there we are. I was like, oh, I don't know if she knows it's cutting in and out here. <laughs> yeah, I can see. <laughs> so okay. I just, uh, I'll just cut that ding dong part in and out and okay. um, I'll, I'll introduce you. That's where I was just happily chatting and making the first part. So <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to clap so I can see that in the audio and uh, I'll start by introducing you. So that's why we generally need a guide, and I'm so glad to have one of the festival speakers with me today, Michelle Carr. Michelle, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Wonderful. Uh, So Michelle, you have uh, registered, signed up, decided, made the choice to be a speaker at the festival, and uh, before we get into that, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Well, I am a uh, realtor by trade. That's what I do. But I personally was struggling with work-life balance. So I left my career in real estate because I thought that would fix the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, And it didn't. But (laughs) I learned a lot about work-life balance. I've actually returned to real estate. And uh, since then, I've done speaking on work-life balance and created an online course for people. So it's very, very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> right. I love that. Like you think something's going to solve the problem and then wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> All your, yes, exactly. <laughs> your issues follow you until you choose to deal with them. <laughs> Craziest thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I imagine that's what you're going to be sharing at the festival. So tell us a little bit about more about why that's important to you and why you're um, choosing to speak about it. Well, I believe that, um, well, the talk that I do is called Work-Life Balance is BS. Um, Here's how to create a delicious life. And, you know, I think that we are fed this idea of work-life balance. And it's not realistic and it's not true in my experience. So what I wanted to do, when when I found a different way to look at this thing, this thing called life, I realized that... I want to share this with other people because if we just 
if we just simply shift our perspective, we can completely change the way we see our lives. And um, that's, that's what the talk's all about. It's about shifting perspective. It's about getting clear about what's important to you and, and creating a plan to make it happen. Oh, I'm covered in goosebumps, which I call truth bumps. And your topic is also very near and dear to my heart too. I totally believe that balance is not achievable. It's a myth and mm -hmm. that there are other ideas. And I love the, the saying that I subscribe to is that one new idea can change your life. And that's really all it takes. And so that's something that you're offering in your talk is one new idea that can completely shift everything. Exactly. Exactly. And now you have a lot going on in your life. You're a, you're a mom, right? I am. I'm a mother of two kids. Uh, my husband and I have a charity that we started. About, uh, it's coming up six years now. Um, we have a dog. We have our real estate business. I mean, th the list goes on and on. So it's, there's a lot going on. And so what you've learned from shifting away from that idea of balance is that you can get it all done. And what else? That you can get it all done as long as you know what you're trying to get done. Yes. And I think that's the key that we miss. And one of the things that I'm going to talk about with people is how to define success because it's different for everybody. And accepting that success is a different definition for each person is a life changing realization to begin with. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so we're going to get into that. Um, but then really digging into your why. You know, why is that success to you? Why does that matter? And when you get clear about what your definition of success is and why it matters to you, man, can you do amazing stuff? That's when you can get it all in. That's when you can get all the things done. When you're really clear about what it is you want to get done. I love that idea and I think it's so true and my own personal example that popped into my mind while you were talking about that was I used to think that I wanted to live in a big modern house like I love modern architecture and I thought I'm working so hard because someday we're going to live in this big modern house and then uh, what we decided to do instead was downsize <laughs> and uh, that I actually took action on and we got rid of two thirds of our possessions. We moved to a condo in the inner city of Calgary and I have never been happier. I am so thrilled. Like my energy has shifted completely because like you said, I got clear on what my definition of success is. Now I see giant modern houses. I'm like, who wants to clean that place? Right. I, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because one of my favorite shows on TV is um, tiny house yes. or some iteration of it because these people are changing their definition of success or, or they're showing us theirs, which I think is a really cool thing because everything teaches us that success when it comes to your home is gigantic. Right. But the truth is it takes a lot of time to clean a gigantic house. <laughs> so how successful is that? Right. But, and, but that, that being said, there's nothing wrong with a big house being your definition because maybe that is something that you want. Maybe you want tons of space to entertain and welcome guests and family in. And maybe part of that definition is a staff to clean it for you. That has to me. <laughs> so you know what, that's, that's what's so beautiful about this world is it takes all kinds to make the world go round. And if we all just get in alignment with what our definition of success is and why it matters to us, we can all walk our path of fabulous and we all are better for it. So I just, I just think it's such an important thing to, to share and recognize. Absolutely. And it's so critical to get clear on what it is. Like you're saying, get clarity on what it is for you and plus get clear on what it is for you right now. Like maybe someday I will live in a giant modern house. Maybe that's, that's a solution or success down the road. And when I let go of that, it was mainly to, I think it was an external thing that I wanted to prove to people that I was doing well, but I'm so happy in our little cocoon and this is perfect for right now. And I'm actually doing even better than I ever thought I could. So adding on what's best for me and what, what is success for me right now is so valuable. That's what I learned. I think this lesson. 
I think that term right now is so key because one of the things I talk about with people is that we have to reevaluate this like every 90 days. Yes. You know, we tend to write goals annually and the big New Year's resolution and all of that. But the thing is, we're cyclical. You know, and I think it's important to reevaluate, yes, at the beginning of the year in January, but when springtime comes along, which here in Alberta may or may not be in March, it could be in June, but yes. who cares? <laughs> um, but I think, you know, that's, that's a natural time. You know, babies in the wild are being born and the snow is melting and the leaves are changing. And, you know, so it's a natural time to think, okay, what's important to me right now? You know, yeah. same as we go into summer. And then again, as we begin the school year, because whether you have kids or not, there's something about September that we shift, yeah. you know, so it, really being connected to what matters in this moment, I think is important because you just take parenthood. I mean, my definition of success when my kids were toddlers and a baby is totally different than yeah. it is now at eight and 10. Right. You know, and at 28 and 30, I'll probably define success as, you know, seeing them a couple of times a year and talking to them on the phone once a week, where yeah. now success to me is being home when they get home from school as many days as I can be, you yeah. know, so it changes and not just on a yearly basis, but it can change quarterly. So we got to stay on top of it because that's how we keep our happy. Right. And I love that you brought in nature. It's so valuable to align ourselves with what's happening in nature around us, wherever we are in the world, because we are part of nature. Our energy is directly linked to what's happening in the greater nature outside of our homes. And that energy does affect us. So I think that's super smart to align it with the seasons. Yeah. Yeah. So this whole festival is based on courageous self-care, and we're going to uh, separate those two ideas for a little bit. Um, what I want to know is, what does self-care mean to you, Michelle? You know, I think self-care is about recharging your battery, however that works best for you. And the analogy that I always use is a cell phone. You know, if your cell phone battery is dying, what do you do to save the battery? you close the apps, right? Because they're yeah. sucking all the juice. Nice. So you're like, oops, I opened Google Maps. Oops, my email's open. Oh, I don't need to be on Pinterest right now. And you start closing all these things that you know are sucking the battery. And we're like that too. We are the cell phone. And every time we go out into the world, whether we are working with a client, volunteering, engaging with our kids, or connecting with our spouse, or even having wine with your girlfriends, all of those things require energy of us. They're all another app that is open. Yes. And if we don't stop and charge the battery at some point, the phone's going to die. And you can't give if you've got no juice. You can't make a phone call. You can't send a text <laughs> if your phone is dead. So we're the same way. We have to stop and charge our batteries. And I think you have to discover what that is for you. You know, for some people, it could be a bath and a book. For others, it could be a hobby of some kind. For me, I love walking around chapters with a caramel macchiato and no one with me. No yeah. children, no friends, no husband. I just, I just like to touch the books, sniff them a little if it's not awkward, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, that energizes me. And I don't need a lot of time, but there's just something to me about having a coffee and walking around chapters that just fills up my battery again. And, you know, it can even be escape stuff. Like I love just sitting down at the end of the day and watching some TV show that has absolutely nothing to do with my life where I just get to go to another world for 52 minutes and it's glorious. <laughs> nice. And I love that you said that self-care is different for everyone. And we do need to experiment. Like um, when I first started paying attention to how I was going to fill myself up, I wrote a big list of what I thought I loved to do. And then I started doing things on those lists. And some of them I was like, hmm, I think this is what I think other people think <laughs> fills me up. I don't think this is yes. true for me. <laughs> yes, I agree 100%. Like the example that's always given is the bath, right? I hate baths. <laughs> you know, I just don't like them. I'm, I'm bored. The water gets cold. I, I, I'm just not a bath girl. And I accept that of myself. 
I accept me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so now moving into the courageous part, uh, what I'm getting our festival guests to do is share something about yourself that not a lot of people know about you. I'm not a bath girl. No. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that I think I don't share a lot um, or say out loud a lot is that I don't believe myself to be an entrepreneur. I don't consider myself an entrepreneur. And when you're in a world and in business, whether it's the speaking in the online course or my real estate, that's sort of an automatic assumption. And I just don't fit that mold. Um, so I think that's something that I don't share with a lot of people because it, it doesn't sound like it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But for me, I have a lot of respect for the true entrepreneur that has the cojones, for lack of a better term, <laughs> to go out there and give it no matter what for their dream. And just everything, blood, sweat, tears, money, all of it, high risk. That is entrepreneurship that I appreciate. I love to watch, read about, learn, but that isn't me. Hmm. That isn't me. I am at my core. I am a teacher and I care about people. So I find myself putting, creating a business where my focus is taking care of clients and teaching or sharing a message because that's what I'm good at, but I'm not an entrepreneur. Interesting. I, I can identify with that. Like I actually started off as a teacher and uh, I feel like we need a new word, like in between entrepreneur and teacher. Yeah. Um, is yet. Yeah. A teacherner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll think about it. Yeah. Entrepreneur teacher. No, yeah. entrepreneur teacher. I don't know. <laughs> entrepreneur preacher. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's perfect. Entrepreneur preacher. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, you've said some really powerful things that I'm sure a lot of people are connecting with and thinking, oh, I could use a new idea. Maybe Michelle's my girl. So um, if you are not in Calgary and not able to come to the festival, I did want to still make our speakers available to you. So Michelle, where can people connect with you online? Um, the best is my website, which is Michelle Carr, and that's Michelle, E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and Carr is C-A-R-R-E. Uh, so michellecarr.com and every week I do a blog video, a vlog. Um, they're usually five to 10 minutes long, different topics that sort of, I, I always say at the beginning of each episode that it's about learning something new or being reminded of something you already knew. Right. And we're in a world with so much information. Sometimes we forget the simplest things. So I do those every week and you can join the list and get them right to your inbox. Um, I also offer a free office organization course for people who are on the list and uh, there's other goodies and discounts that they get as well. So that's a good space to connect. I'm on Instagram as well. It's Michelle Carr underscore com. And uh, that's just more of a fun way to put stuff out there about more than just the business, but life in general. Nice. Now you're speaking of goodies. So at the um, Courageous Self Care Festival, we have swag bags for the first hundred people and mm -hmm. all the speakers and uh, vendors are donating stuff, uh, filling it up with really special, unique ideas. So what are you putting in there? Well, I, the talk I'm doing, Work Life Bounces BS, there is, I love a good analogy. And I use a sweet treat as part of my analogy. I won't, I won't go any more into it than that, but to help bring it all together, it will be a sweet treat in the swag bag for everyone to enjoy at some point in the day. I love it. I'm so excited for the swag bags. <laughs> to get <them> all <laughs> Me too. Packed. They're going to be fabulous. Yeah, absolutely. They are. Well, Michelle, I really appreciate you stepping up and stepping into this Courageous Self-Care Festival. Together, we are creating something that I know is going to be a, a shifting day for a lot of women here in Calgary. I think it's just a beautiful thing that you have created. You have created a space for ideas and nurturing and connection. And I commend you for that because it's, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of vision to create a space like that. And uh, I, I think you've put together a great group of speakers. So I will come and hold your hand to try and 
connect that space all the way around in a big giant circle. And I know all the other speakers will join hands and it will be just a beautiful day. Oh, it's going to be amazing. I'm getting goosebumps again. And uh, yeah, I've definitely had to tap into that courage muscle and learn how to flex it doing this gigantic. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's, I put the courageous in self-care for me, for my own benefit, <laughs> to remind myself I am courageous and I can always expand my, um, yeah, expand my courage as well. <laughs> Good for you. I think it's inspiring for a lot of people. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. So if you are in Calgary, I do want to offer you as a thank you for listening to this podcast, a complimentary ticket. You can get that. The link is in the description to this podcast and I'll also give it to you at selfcareticket.com. We would love for you to join us. And if you're not in Calgary, boo hoo. We're sad that you won't be able to join us. However, you never know. Maybe there will be a Courageous Self-Care Festival in your future somewhere. I am open to possibilities. So if you do want to reach out and say, hmm, maybe we could work on this together wherever you are in the world, let's make it happen. I'm at christinamarlette.com and you can connect with me there. Michelle, thanks again for taking time to do this and for sharing your gifts and talents and your wisdom. Thank you. It was awesome. I enjoyed it too. And thank you for listening. I look forward to connecting with you again next time. Bye-bye for now.